Well, hi everyone. It has been a hot minute since the last time I recorded. Let's see, the last time I recorded was, I think YouTube said four months ago, and four months ago is August? <laughs> it has been a while. Um, and, you know, I don't really have anything to say for myself. I really don't. Um, let's see, when did I actually upload this? Nope, never mind, not August. July 25th was the last time I uploaded. Anyways, this is episode, if I can even remember what episode... Uh, number I'm on. This is episode 163 <laughs> of Sarah Nova Crafts. I'm your host, Jessica. I can be found on Ravelry and Twitter as Sarah Nova and as Sarah Nova Crafts on Instagram. Um, I will do my best to put show notes down below. I do theoretically have a blog for this podcast that I also haven't updated in just as long. Maybe I'll actually type up like actual show notes. Sorry, I keep like adjusting myself because I have this here. And Anyways, um, and it's been a long time since I recorded, but this is episode 163. I have no idea what I'm going to title this. Um, I had to look up, like, on my phone when the last time I recorded was. Um, a lot has happened since July. Uh, I actually got married for one, which if you watched my last episode in July, you knew because I was planning for the wedding, but I got married. Um, <laughs> and uh, I did finish the shawl in time for the wedding just to, just to, Finished that cliffhanger right there. I finished the shawl in time for the wedding. I did not wear it during the ceremony. My dress came with a lace shrug that I wore instead, um, but I did wear it for our first dance at the reception. Um, however, uh, it was an 80 degree day, so it came off basically as soon as the dance was over, and it just sat on our Kevin and my table um, for the duration of the reception because 80 degrees was too warm to be wearing a wool shawl. <laughs> so... But the wedding was really good. Um, my cousin's wife, this is about the wedding, I swear. My cousin's wife, she um, has a good time at parties like this. And, like, we had an open bar, so, like, she enjoyed herself, which is totally fine. He was driving. They were responsible. They booked a hotel room, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They were very good about the whole thing. But anyways, um, last month in October, we go out to their house in upstate New York. My mom and I drive out for the day because it's their daughter's birthday. Their middle child or their youngest? Which one has the Halloween birthday? They have two daughters, and one of them's the middle child, one of them's the youngest child. And I don't remember which one has the Halloween birthday, but the daughter with, the, like, the Halloween birthday, um, which isn't quite Halloween, but close enough to Halloween, um, uh, we went out for the birthday, and she was like, wait, I have something for you. And I'm like, what do you have for me, right? She, I follow her into the kitchen in the house. She opens up the cabinet and pulls out a, one of the, like, bar glasses, and it's a bar glass from the venue where we had the wedding. She made off with it. I'm just like, you did not. <laughs> and she totally made off with one of the bar glasses, like, you know, just like the beer glasses, like the standard size, you know, like 16-ounce beer things that had the logo for the venue on it. I'm just like, you did not just do that, and she did, and I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> It's a good thing they didn't notice and didn't charge us for it. I mean, it's a glass. Like, it probably cost them, like, five bucks. You know, it's a customized glass. Probably cost them less than five bucks. But, you know. And, and um, so, but beyond the wedding, I have been to three separate yarn shows. I've worked two of them, attended one. And I actually forgot to bring all of the goodies from all of those shows anywhere near me. Um, they are all put away, like, with my yarn stuff, where they belong, like, you know, and one of them I've been using. Because um, when I went to Rhinebeck this year, I got an electric eel wheel. I got the eel wheel nano, which um, the bobbins can do two ounces at a time. Um, that was kind of a, a wedding present to myself. Um, I had some money that I've been given for the wedding, and Kevin let me take a little bit of it for my weekend. And so... Um, because we pulled most of it, because we're going to use most of it as a honeymoon fund, but he let me take a little bit of it to, to go to Rhinebeck. And um, so with that money, I, and also I've been saving up all year. I save up all year for Rhinebeck um, because it's a big year. It's a big weekend in my year. I spend it with all my friends, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so between the little bit of money he let me take from what we got for the wedding and the stuff I've been saving all year to go to Rhinebeck, um, I had enough that I could make the impulse purchase of buying this electric spinning wheel <laughs> for a hundred and some odd dollars, which I normally wouldn't have done something like that, you know, spur of the moment. I would have been like, oh, this is way too much money. But it was kind of like a wedding slash birthday present slash, you know, it's been a tough year kind of present to myself. And um, I've been very much enjoying it. It can run, it can either plug in directly or it can run off of like one of those little portal bat portable batteries you use to like, say, charge your phone. Um, it's been great. I've been thoroughly enjoying it. Um, 
and I've been spinning quite happily with it. Not spinning as much as I'd like to, but anyways. But anyways, um, the shawl I finished for the wedding because I have it right here. I don't think I can get it all in frame, but here you go. This is making for a good shot. But yeah, so I will hold it up close so you can see. So there's the center and it goes out through all the lace and to the border. And the border took me the longest time. I actually finished this. You're gonna laugh. The wedding was September 22nd, which was a Sunday. I finished this the Thursday before, which was the 19th. So I knit this whole thing between July 14th and September 19th. And I have pictures of it blocking on my living room floor on the 20th. I unpinned it on the 21st and I wore it on the 22nd. And it has gone with me to every single show since. Um, when I went to Vermont Sheep and Wool, um, which was two weeks after the wedding, I brought this and I kind of laid, because I worked for 100 Ravens, um, I worked the show for them, and um, I kind of laid it out on the table and like people would come in from a distance and be like, oh my God, what what is this like? Because this is their lace. I used um, a little over, I used about a skein and a quarter, which I should have used about a skein and a half of their Alfar lace. Now their Alfar lace is over 900 yards, um, and this pattern calls for about 1,500 yards of lace but my gauge was way too tight and I didn't realize it until the shawl was basically done and I wasn't gonna re-knit it because I did not have time to re-knit it. Um, if I knit this shawl again, which I would like to do because I want to do, I, as a Hufflepuff, I somehow made a shawl in Ravenclaw colors, right? The silver with the blue. I somehow did a Ravenclaw shawl. Well, a movie, movie Ravenclaw shawl, not a book Ravenclaw because book Ravenclaw is bronze and blue, but movie Ravenclaw is silver and blue. Anyways, but anyways, <laughs> so, you know, divergent thoughts aside. It has been a long time since I recorded, so I'm a little out of practice. I'm sorry. Um, but this has gotten a lot of attention as I'm going to. I brought this to Vermont Sheep and Wool, and then I um, brought it to Rhinebeck. I was gonna wear my Rockefeller, which is the header, which is the title image of this podcast. So if you are watching this right now, you know what my Rockefeller looks like, because it's a thing I'm holding up in front of the Wall of Swords. Um, <laughs> Which actually, we don't have that Wall of Swords anymore. That's the apartment that Kevin and I were living in before we bought the house. The Wall of Swords is now downstairs in our basement because we do not have enough wall space in our upstairs to put the Wall of Swords. Um, I am recording in my living room. It's actually been snowing all day, so actually my light's really good. It was actually better about two hours ago, but I was working from home today, so I had to do all of my stuff for work before I could record, so my light has faded just a little bit, but I did get a ring light for real cheap on the internet. I paid like five or ten bucks for it, so um, I have some soft um, um, white light coming. So I have like the harsh white of like outside coming in, but then I have like the softer ring light coming in. So um, that's better. And I've got my camera propped up in front of me. I'm doing my best to look at the lens and not at the, and not at the view screen so that it doesn't look like I'm looking up the whole video. I'm doing my best to talk to the lens, to the lens, not to the video screen, which is above the lens. Um, I feel like it would be easier if my video screen was like off to the side <laughs> instead of um, above because then at least I'm looking to like the side and it's not as bad. But anyways, um, so I finished this and then um, I wore, I ended up wearing it right, right back instead of my Rockefeller because it was too warm to wear my Rockefeller. I was like sweating like nobody's business. And then, um, and then I brought it to Fiber Festival of New England, also known as NEF, which was the beginning of November. Um, and I had this at the, uh, booth too, because I was working that for 100 Ravens. Um, speaking of working shows for 100 Ravens, I'm going to be at Vogue Knitting Live in January. I'm going to be helping Becca out in the booth at Vogue Knitting at the Marketplace. So I'll be at Vogue Knitting Live. And then also in January, there's, uh, the Wayland, um, Farmer's Market Fiber Day, which is at the Rutland Gar Garden Center in Wayland. That's the 27th? I think um, I'm looking it up uh, because um, I want to be able to tell you the actual date, but I'm going to be there. I'm going to be working the booth there for them on that day. Um, no, I don't want that button. Thank you. Please, 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 please. Okay. Uh, the 26th. So January 26th is the Wayland Farm Fiber Day, which is at the Rutland, uh, Russell's, not Rutland. Why am I saying Rutland? Russell's Garden Center in Wayland, Mass. Um, so Vogue Knitting Live and the Fiber Day, and then there's going to be another Fiber Day in Lowell in February that I'm going to be at as well for them. That's at mill number five in Lowell. Um, and then I'm going to do the, I'll, I'm doing other stuff for them throughout the year, because of course I am, but you know. Um, 
but so you know so this shawl has seen a lot of love in the, over the last couple of months um, it's been a little over two months now so seen plenty of love and um, but yeah my gauge was way way off on this like super super off it, this should be about a foot and a half wider than it is this should be about five and a half to six feet across and it's only about four feet across which is why I can lean back and actually show you the whole thing um, because yeah my gauge was way way tighter than it should have been so I only used a little under 1100 yards and the pattern is supposed to be 1200 yards I mean 1500 yards so I used way less than I should have um, so don't take my numbers as um, the appropriate because my gauge was way way off it was knit too tight it's too small etc I should have gone up I'd gone up a needle size already from what the pattern said I probably should have gone up two or three needle sizes I think the pattern says a two and I knit this on a three or the pattern says three and I knit it on a three but I really should have knit it on like a four or a five <laughs> because yeah uh it's a little small but it's like a wearable size so like I'm not upset with it but like I said I do want to knit another one in Hufflepuff colors and um, I want to do it yellow with black beads for Hufflepuff and um, that one, I'm actually debating knitting it out of fingering weight yarn because um, 100 Ravens now has a true sock, a 75-25 merino nylon. And I think that would be really good. It would add some extra strength to it because this is 100% merino. Um, the nylon would add some strength. But anyways, um, Vermont Sheep and Wool was great. Had a great time. Um, I actually did record an episode like after Vermont Sheep and Wool, but unfortunately my laptop fell off the desk at work and the hard drive that held the video file was attached and both hit the ground and broke. Um, my laptop screen now has giant cracks all over it and the corner of the case is bent and that hard drive was a total loss. So <laughs> I had recorded actually I think two episodes in between the last time I recorded, the last time I posted an episode and now, um, but yeah that no <laughs> sorry uh that they weren't getting up um but for much people was really fun i had a great time um it was a little cold but it was good um is that for me no okay sorry the fedex truck is going by because i can see out the windows of my house um yeah i worked from home today because of winter storm ezekiel because that's a thing because we've gotten like a foot and a half of snow in the last two days here kevin went to work i was trying to convince him to stay home but he insisted on going in and, um, oh, just yanked the necklace trying to fix my hair. That was good. Um, but yeah, he got up really early to shovel and, uh, and religious school was canceled today because the public school district where the religious school is, so the town where I work in, we go by the public school schedule. So if they cancel, we cancel. So they canceled. So we canceled religious school. So I just had some office stuff to do today, but everything I could needed to do, I could do from home. So I did it from my couch as well my desk upstairs but you know as opposed to driving in uncertain conditions <laughs> um a half hour to work uh but so anyways back to knitting stuff I also finished and this needs to go in the mail this week because I've been horrible about mailing this it's been done for ages but I need to is this the um Warwick Reflections this got finished and um it's going to go into the mail to the dyer of this yarn and it will be a booth sample for her. I um, actually need to order some. Okay, sorry about that quick cut there. But um, I hit the cord that is charging my camera and accidentally pulled the whole thing down. So I had to cut that out. So um, yeah, I need to order some poly mailers so I can actually mail this. Um, or I should just go to Staples tomorrow. I should just go to Staples tomorrow and pick them up instead of ordering them online. I only need like a 10 pack. I don't need a 100 pack like you can get on the internet, you know. But anyways, this is done. Um, the lace at the bottom I'm not happy with, and it's not anything that has to do with the pattern. I did it exactly as written, it's exactly as the pattern is. If this is a personal preference of mine. Um, unless I'm knitting the entire shawl this way, I don't like, um, garter lace. So, if I'm knitting, like, a certain type of shawl, like a Hopsalu or an Estonian or whatever, like, type of shawl, they do their lace in garter, which is fine. Like, I get it. Like, that's the way that the, that look is. That's how that is. And I'm fine with that because I would love to knit those shawls. But for this with this edge, especially with the stocking net sections in the garter, I'm not a fan. If I was knitting this for myself, if I was making this pattern myself, what I would have done is knit this whole thing as stocking net. I wouldn't have knitted as garter. But this is a booth sample. This isn't for me. I don't get to keep this. So I knit it exactly as written with the garter here instead. 
Um, so you can see like there's a cable and then there's garter lace in here and then there's another cable. You can see that there. Color is actually pretty accurate too from what I can see on my camera screen. Um, but yeah, so like I personally, if I was knitting this for myself, would have changed it. And if I knit this pattern again, which I might, that is a change I will make. Um, but I haven't decided if I'm going to knit this again right now or if I might wait like a year or so before I knit it. Um, so that's everything that I finished. That's two finished projects. Um, I think that's all I actually have finished on like projects and stuff because like I have not been knitting a lot. I have been so ridiculously busy that like it's been it's been absolutely insane because with the wedding and everything and then so after the wedding right so my September was this first weekend of September we did the Renaissance Fair with the wedding party second weekend of September I had a thing at the synagogue I had to do third weekend of September was the Ofrif before the wedding which was a luncheon at the synagogue that my parents put on for Kevin you know and there's Kevin and I got a blessing from the rabbi etc etc then the wedding and then like the last weekend of September first weekend that you write the like 29th was the Jewish high holidays. And then the first weekend of October was Vermont sheep and wool. Then second weekend of October, my mom and I went to the Topsfield fair. Cause we've been doing that every year ever. Um, and then the third weekend of October was Rhinebeck. Fourth weekend of October. Um, I ended up going to, and then the fourth weekend of October, I went to upstate New York for my cousin's daughter's birthday. First weekend of November, Neff, and then finally, the second weekend of November, I didn't actually have anything to do. Third weekend of November was my birthday weekend. Fourth weekend of November, which was last weekend, as in the weekend before Thanksgiving, as in we just had Thanksgiving weekend, but the weekend before Thanksgiving. Um, Kevin and I went away for the weekend, to like a little mini two-night honeymoon just to get away because it's been so crazy. So yeah, that has been my fall, which is part of the reason why I haven't recorded because I have had no time to do anything because like, oh, I finished one other thing. But I don't physically have it in my possession because it was a sample for 100 Ravens. So I did um, a crochet scarf thing. Here's what it looks like. You can see my ring there. Sorry. I'll do it like this. You can see that there. Um, it's called Twisted Minstrel. Pattern is On Ravelry? On Ravelry? Uh, yes. It's by Michelle Stead. Here. Twisted Minstrel by Michelle Stead. It's on Ravelry. Um, I crocheted this as a booth sample for 100 Ravens. So I finished that as well. So I finished three things one of which is no longer in my possession. The second one, which will no longer be in my possession soon. Um, but I have started, I started one thing. I figured since I finished two things, I could cast on one thing. So I did buy yarn at Rhinebeck, because who doesn't buy yarn at Rhinebeck, right? I went, I bought yarn at Rhinebeck. But anyways, um, I bought yarn and I actually started, I bought it this yarn specifically to make a sweater. And I bought it to make this specific sweater because there's this com yarn company that had giant like 8.4 ounce or, or 8 ounce skeins or something and I'm just like and I really liked one of the colors so I was like yes please I will take one and then I bought a contrast to go with because that single skein which was almost 1200 yards um <clears throat> it's not quite enough to make a sweater for myself I need like 1400 yards to make a sweater for myself because I like them long. I'm short torsoed, but I like my sweaters to come down over my hips and I like my sleeves to come down like onto my hands. So um, because of that, I need more yarn than my size really dictates to, to knit a sweater. But anyways, um, I bought this yarn to make the sweater. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you already know what happened with this sweater. And what happened with this sweater was I finished the yoke and I started the body and then I was knitting the body on the wrong size needle and the gauge was too far off for me to salvage by blocking. So I ripped the entire body out all the way back to the yoke and now I started on the body again. This is currently in timeout because I'm still annoyed with it because I only ripped it out on Saturday and today is Tuesday. Um, probably tomorrow or Thursday I will pick this up again, but right now I'm still upset with it because I was stupid and used the wrong needle size. <laughs> uh, but here it is. So this is the sweater so far in its current state. So you can see it's just like so the, I'm calling it a chocolate brown, but the colorway name for the brown is coffee. And then the uh, orange here, you can see there's lace here. You can see there's lace. Um, the orange is called honeybee. And, um, and so the sleeves will also be in the orange. So the sleeves will be in the orange. I just realized like when I reset up my camera, it was tilted. There we go, that's better. Okay, that's better. <laughs> Accidentally stopped the recording and started a new one, oh well. So anyways, um, the body's gonna be this orange color and the sleeves are going to match. Um, I might do the cuffs in the brown, I'm not sure, I still have about a half skein of the brown left. 
but um, I have a giant skein of this. The sweater, if you're wondering, is called Winterly, and it is the picture on Ravelry has a blue and white sweater. Um, let me pull it up so I can show you. So it has a blue and white, and you can see the lace panel. So, um, so my brown is the blue and the orange is the body. So that is Winterly by Suvi Simola, and it is in uh, Lane Magazine issue one, or you can, I think you can buy it on Ravelry. You might be able to actually buy it on Ravelry. Yes, you can. It's um, 6.2 euros or $7.14 US with the current exchange rate. Um, it's actually a pretty easy pattern. Um, it's not terribly difficult. Um, the ridges on the neck are just, um, every once in a while you do a pearl row. So it's really easy. It's just a raglan's. I mean, so if raglan's aren't your thing, then obviously, you know. Um, but there's pl uh, quite a few projects, and um, I've been enjoying it when I've actually used the correct needle size. Um, the other thing I've been working on is um, I started a pair of socks to have in the booth when I'm working for 100 Ravens that's out of their yarn. So I just started a pair of Hermione's Everyday Socks on their sock yarn. So here you can see the pearls of the Hermione's Everyday. Um, this colorway is big and bright, which is a colorway that was supposed to be a um, temporary, like, show-only colorway and then became a permanent colorway. Um, this was the colorway that was from the Texas fiasco where their trailer got stolen. And I'm sorry if I keep swapping between they and we when I talk about 100 Ravens. I started doing more work for them. Um, I'm actually doing some dyeing and stuff in the dye room and some of their website stuff. So I've been trying to be good and say we because I am now actually like working, working for them. But um, I still do say they sometimes like I'm not actually like working for them. So I apologize for my inconsistent grammar in relationship to my relationship with the Hundred Ravens because yeah, <laughs> that's a thing. <laughs> so um, and then one other project that I pulled out because I was mad at the sweater. I pulled this out because I was mad at the sweater. I pulled out my What the Fade, which I had not worked on in a while um, for reasons, and those reasons were life. <laughs> so, aka, I don't have a good excuse. Um, but so I finished section one and I'm on to section two. So here's what it looks like. Here's the what's supposed to be the right side and what's supposed to be the wrong side. So, um, so it's two color brioche at one point, like here where there's these stripes you're fading from one set of colors to another one set of two yarns to another set of two yarns, which means you have four balls of yarn attached to your brioche, which I don't feel like, I'm, A, I don't feel like I'm giving anything away in this pattern because it's pretty obvious that there's um, transition sections where you have to fade from one to the other. Um, and uh, also it's brioche and having four balls attached when doing brioche is officially a pain in the ass. Um, I'm going to do it. I have to do it, I think, two more times <laughs> to finish the brioche section of this shawl, but here you go. It's brioche. I was, when I first started the transition, right, you can see the lines here. When I first started the transition, I wasn't sure. Um, I wasn't sure about, uh, like, the colors and the way they were going to blend because it, you don't start with A and B and then C and D and then E and F, right? You start with A and D and then C and E. And then, I mean, A and D, and then B and E, and then C and F. And so I'm like, wait a sec, because I'd laid these colors out as if I was working from A, B, C, right? And so then when I'm swapping them around, I'm like, wait a sec. But then I really looked at it, and I'm like, you know what? It is what it is. I'm just going to knit the shawl, because I really want the shawl. I really like all of these colors together, because it was a kit I bought to do a, a find your fade. But I decided I didn't want to knit another find your fade, because I find... Um, asymmetrical shawls hard to wear. I prefer to wear symmetrical shawls. And a what the fade is symmetrical and a find your fade isn't. And a what the fade uses only six skeins and a um, and a find your fade uses seven. So I bought a seven skein kit to do a find your fade. And then I decided I didn't want to do another one. And so I um, took one skein out. There was a solid black skein in the kit. So I just pulled that skein. I'll use it for like a hat or something. Cause I mean, cause it's good, you know, uh, 75, 25 sock yarn. Um, so I'll use it for a hat or something, you know, I probably won't use it for socks cause it's like black, black. Um, 
but sorry, I saw a car. Uh, and so I had was left with those six. So they do all co color coordinate and go together. So I decided to just roll with it, whatever it is. Um, so, uh, you probably heard me mention earlier that Kevin and I went away for the weekend, not this past weekend, which was Thanksgiving weekend, but the weekend before. We did a little two-night getaway. Um, we'd been given a hotel gift certificate, and so we decided to use that. And we went up to Stowe, Vermont, and we stayed at the Trapp Family Lodge. Now, if you are familiar with The Sound of Music, you are familiar with the Von Trapp family. Now, the story, the real-life, actual history of the Trapp family is very different than what the movie is, because the movie had to condense about 15 years of stuff into 90 minutes. <laughs> um, because, yeah, that... It, it, so, like, apparently in real life, the Baron and Maria met in the 20s. Like, they got married in 1927, and the Nazis didn't invade Austria until 1938. So, they were married for 11 years <laughs> before the Nazis invaded. They didn't come, unlike in the movie, they didn't come back from their honeymoon and find the flag hanging from their home. Um, but anyways, um, we decided to go stay there because they did settle in Vermont, and they did start this lodge. And these days, they now, and this is going to sound like a commercial, I swear, but it was gorgeous up there. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'll throw in a couple of photos so you can see, like, the view from, like, our hotel room and, like, what the lodge looks like. And it's just, it's absolutely beautiful up there. The mountains are stunning. It's, it's you know, the green mountains of Vermont. Um, when we were there, it was... The, like the first snow of the year they've been making snow at the ski resorts but um but in terms of like just regular snow it was like one of the first snowfalls and it was just absolutely gorgeous up there i loved our hotel room um we sprung for a small suite that had a working fireplace that we enjoyed both nights of our stay um and we did a whole bunch of stuff in and around the area while we were up there we um hi zoe i just heard a kitty so say hi to zoe look at zoe She's a good girl. You are good, Zoe? You are good, Zoe? You want to say hi to the internet? Look at that pretty face. Look at that pretty face. Yeah, who's a good Zoe? She's the floofy one, but she's also tiny. She's only like seven or eight pounds. She's small. Anyways, what was I saying? Um, So we get up to the lodge. We get up there on Friday night, and there she is. Because I still had to work on Friday. Kevin took that Friday off, but um, but I still had to work, so I worked. And I came home, we packed the car, and off we went. And um, so we drove up. We got there around 6.30, which wasn't that bad, really. It's only about a two, two-and-a-half-hour drive from our house. Now I have cat hair, like, all in my face. I am so sorry. It's, like, really bad to be, but cat hair. Um, and so we had dinner like at in the lodge dining room that night um and like in our on the way back up to our room in the elevator there's a poster for apparently every saturday morning <laughs> they have a history of the von trapp family and it's a lecture and they show um a documentary made in either 83 or 84 by the bbc they followed maria back to austria when she went back for the last time before she passed away she passed away in 1987 um but she went back to austria in 83 and i don't remember if this documentary came out in 83 or 84 but it was a bbc documentary um and they followed her back and she tells the story and she tells the story of like how um how the kids convinced her to marry the baron because they didn't actually, like, fall in love themselves. The kids convinced them to get married. Um, and she talked about, you know, being in the convent and then being sent to the Baron's house to... It actually wasn't to be a governess. It was to be a tutor for his daughter, Maria, because the Baron had a daughter named Maria, so there's two Marias in real life. Um, also, there are far less boys. There's only three boys total out of all the kids, and total... There ended up being ten children. Maria had three kids. Um, the youngest one is still alive, and I think a couple of them are still alive. But the youngest one is now 80 years old. And, um, actually he's more than 80 years old. He's, he, I don't know, he's in his 80s. Um, but anyways, it was a lecture of, which was the history, the real history of the Von Trapp family. And then it was a showing of this documentary. And then we got a short Q&A section with a member of the family. And now, not all the family is involved in the lodge, and not all the family wants to be known and wants to be um, in the public eye, but the family members who are involved in the lodge, um, they work just like everyone else does. The lodge itself is a working farm. They now have, when they first bought the property in the 40s, it had 350, 360 acres, something like that, and now it has 
tw over 2,500 acres, and they've actually turned a good chunk of it into a land trust, which I think is just really cool. Like, it just, that's really cool. Like, you're turning, you're saving this pristine wilderness. Um, and they have hiking trails and cross-country skiing trails and lots of stuff to do. Um, but, and the, so, but after we had our lecture, we then went to the brewery and I got myself a souvenir magnet. I'm going to hold up the magnet for you to see. So this is the brewery logo. It's shiny, sorry. So the Von Trapp Brewery in Stowe, Vermont. And in case you're wondering, this animal, which is a little, little hard to see, it's an ibex. Um because they're the highest climbing animal in Europe, apparently, and that's a thing, and obviously some wheat stalks. So, um, fun trap brewing. Um, they do their own um, Austrian-style lagers and stuff. Um, it was really cool to take a brewery tour. I'll pop in a couple of pictures while I talk here. Um, the tour is about an hour. They only do it once a day on Saturdays and on Wednesdays, I think. They do tours, like, twice a week. So we, so we like, had to, like, leave the Q&A really fast, like, with after the history lecture, and then scooch over to the brewery because... The brewery tour was at 1, and this lecture was supposed to be done at 12.30, and it went a little over, but it's a good thing we only had to go, like, 0.3 miles. <laughs> so, like, we, we finished the lecture, we'd already brought our coats and stuff with us, so we scooched out the door of the lodge and got in the car and drove down to the brewery and had the brewery tour, and that was good. Very much enjoyed it. I also got, um, at the brewery, I got a, um, a sweater, and it has the same logo. Might be a little easier to see the logo on this. Um, it's just a nice, warm kind of sweater thing. I decided to go with this because the logo is actually embroidered, which means it'll last longer than like a printed shirt. Um, so that's good. And then um, I did get a magnet of the lodge. I decided to get a winter scene one because there was snow on the ground when we were there. So that's the magnet I got. So then after we did the brewery, <laughs> we did another thing. This was, this was the Saturday of our trip. We, um, we went to Ben & Jerry's and we did the factory tour at Ben & Jerry's. Got to try some ice cream, which is always good. Um, then we went back to the lodge and had a a bit of a lazy afternoon, and then we went back to the brewery for dinner. It was really good. Now, the thing with the restaurants at the lodge is that um, they use as much of um, what they grow on the farm as they can. So, like, I mean, okay, like, the flour they used to make something might not have been, like, grown from, like, wheat they grew, but, like, the vegetables, so, like, the carrots, the cucumbers, the potatoes, all that stuff... That comes from their own farm, the meat, so like the beef, the pork, um, the chicken, all that, the eggs, you know, all come from their own farm. Um, they try to grow like their own parsley and other herbs, um, you know, so they, they try to be, they try to do as much as they can. So their menu is actually very seasonal, um, but yeah, so that was good. So, but yeah, we went to Ben and & Jerry's and I got my factory tour magnet because of course I had to get a magnet. And so, but we just had a nice, um, nice Saturday afternoon. And then Sunday morning we had to leave, unfortunately, but, um, we got up, we had breakfast. Um, originally Kevin wasn't going to join me for breakfast because he wasn't feeling like it, but then he came down and had breakfast with me. And, uh, probably one of the swankiest breakfasts I've ever had. Because, <laughs> like, we jumped at the chance to stay at the Trapped Family Lodge because it is on the pricier side. And when were we, when were we going to get another chance, right? My argument for picking that place for our weekend away was, when are we going to have this chance again, right? Like, when, right? Because, I mean, we're not wealthy. You know, we, we, sp we saved up and we planned for this weekend. And the only reason we did it was because of that gift certificate we got. And so, um, you know, we decided to take the opportunity to go stay somewhere that we normally wouldn't simply because um, it was something special and it was something that meant something, you know, and um, and it was close enough that we could do it for a weekend trip and it was, you know, something out of the ordinary. It wasn't like a Motel 6 or something, which is normally my price range for hotels and stuff. Um, so, yeah, like, you know, we, we did the weekend at that place because it was you know, an opportunity that we wouldn't normally have. Um, but anyways, you know, and so, like, when I say, like, it was a swanky breakfast, I mean, like, it was, like, real china and real silver, so, real silverware, and, like, you know, it was just, the quality of everything was really good, um, you know, and they were, like, playing classical music over the speakers, and, you know, just, just that type of thing. Like, there had been a pianist, in the lounge the night that we'd had dinner, you know, like, it was, it's one of those things where, like, if you 
are always doing stuff like that, you don't notice it. But when you don't normally stay places that, you know, have actual fabric napkins and not a stack of paper napkins for you to take while you serve yourself the free continental breakfast, you know, like, there's a difference, okay? <laughs> And so it was just really nice. It was just, it was a really nice weekend. Our room was really nice. I mean, there was a jacuzzi tub in the bathroom. Like, come on, this place was nice. Um, the lodge was beautiful. There's memorabilia up on the wall everywhere. And it was just, it was a really good time. Um, so, but anyways, on Sunday after we had breakfast and checked out, we drove over to, where is it? South of Burlington. Where's the Vermont? We, we went to the Vermont Teddy Bear Factory. I'm forgetting what town it's in. It's south of Burlington, Vermont. Um, I am not remembering right now because for some reason I just cannot think. Come on. Come on, phone. Can I type, please? Oh my god, I'm trying to look up the address for you. It's in Shelburne, Vermont, which is just south of Burlington. Uh, it was about an hour... Hello, camera, don't fall again. It was about an hour from the hotel, so it was an hour um, west, so actually the opposite direction of home. Um, and we went there. I actually, um, let me grab the bear because he's sitting right on the floor over there because I took him with me on Sunday to my grandmother's because I got her a little ornament that I gave her. Um, they did a, uh, they did a, they did two sets of ornaments this year. They did, um, the 12 days of Christmas, like that song, bears based off of each of the 12 days. And then, um, and then they, the other set of ornaments was from the, based off the poem slash story, The Night Before Christmas. And that one, um, I got my grandmother one of those, like the Night Before Christmas ones. But let me grab the bear. All right, so I have the bear. Um, I'm opening the box here. Yeah, so they still put air holes in the boxes. I mean, I bought him there, but they still put air holes in the boxes. Like, you know, that's a thing. Oh, and I like what it says on the bottom of the box. So on the bottom of the box it says, if you can read this, then either you're under this box or the box is upside down and the bear inside is getting a headache. <laughs> I just, I love it. It's cute. So, um, so I got a souvenir t-shirt because of course I got a souvenir t-shirt because that's a thing. I got, a, I forgot to get a souvenir magnet though. I wanted to get a souvenir magnet and I didn't, but I got a souvenir t-shirt. Um, and I got a bear. That's a sweater for the bear. Um, but I got a bear, and their black fabric bears are actually, like, um, really soft, so... And the bow tie I got him is super cute, because they actually had Star of David stuff. So, um, I got a Star of David bow tie for my bear. Look at him, isn't he cute? Isn't he cute? I'm saying he, but yeah, I mean, it could be a she, but... I'm just gonna say he for my bear. Isn't it cute? Isn't that bow tie cute? I know, my camera's, like, not... You know, you can see in the eyes. And in the eyes, it's, um... It either says born in Vermont, which means the bear was made in their factory there, or if it says, um, what does it say? Like just Vermont or something, um, then it was made elsewhere. Because they do have like other plushies, not like these style bears, but like other non artic they have non-articulated bears um, that are made elsewhere. Um, and they have a champ plushie, it was really funny. So we get there, right, and we're waiting for the tour to start. And, um, and we're looking at this display of, of stuffed animals. I took a picture, so I'll pop it in. And, um, and Kevin's like, oh, it's Nessie. I'm like, no, it's not. It's probably Champ. And he's like, who's Champ? I'm like, well, the Loch Ness Monster is Nessie, and Lake Champlain in Vermont supposedly has its own lake monster, and his name is Champ, because Lake Champlain, which is spelled C-H-A-P-L, et cetera, et cetera. So he's Champ. And... Kevin was like, what? He'd never heard, somehow he'd never heard of Champ. I'm just like, no, it's Lake Champlain Monster. It's Champ. And he's just like, what? And then when we were on the tour, the woman, the girl giving the tour said that it was in fact Champ. And I looked at him, I'm like, see, <laughs> it's Champ. And he's just like, wait, we have our own, like, I'm like, yes, yes. Just like there's American Stonehenge in New Hampshire. <laughs> Because there's an ancient uh, Neolithic Native American structure here in New Hampshire that's often called America's Stonehenge. Um, it's just an ancient stone construction. Um, they still haven't quite figured out what it was for. But anyways, we have that, right? And in Vermont, we have Champ, because we have Lake Champlain, and apparently there's a monster in Lake Champlain, too, just like there's Nessie over in Loch Ness. Right? Like, yeah, welcome to New England. We have weird stuff. Uh, <laughs> so, um... So yeah, I went and I got my bear, super cute. They actually had the little bow tie, which I was super happy about. 
So I was super happy to find Star David stuff because like you never, like among all the, because they had all their Christmas stuff out, of course, because you know, it was before Thanksgiving, but they had all their Christmas stuff out. And like, I saw this, I'm just like, yes, I need the bow tie. Originally I was just gonna get the bear like without anything, um, but the sweater also, it's little stars of David and it's so cute. I need to put the sweater on the bear, but it's so cute. I actually just like him like this, like the orange and the black, which is kind of Halloween-y, but I like it. He's cute. Um, so yeah, that was our weekend away. I know I spent way too, probably way too long talking about that, um, but if I saw you at a yarn show over the last two months, feel free to say hi in the comments down below. If I'm going to see you at a yarn show in the next couple of months, because... January is a thing. Um, feel free to drop a comment down below. Um, I am also thinking about going and doing a day trip to Montreal because there is because that's four. It's only four and a half hours to Montreal from my house, so it's like I, that's a day trip. I can drive up there for the day. I have a passport, so you know. Um, thinking about going up in January. There's a um, there's a Vincent Van Gogh Van Gogh. I'm never sure how to say it. Um, special exhibition and um one of my knitting friends lynn who is the host of the uh, tangled skein podcast i'll link her down below too um she uh, uh she's going with her fiance just before christmas just after christmas something like that and um and i was like ooh, that's really cool and it goes till like february 2nd so i'm like ooh, i should go that seems really interesting because i like art like that i mean i took art history i took art classes like, etc. I've, I've done a lot of art art, like fine art over the years, not like, I mean, crafting is an art form, but it's different. I've done like fine art, I've done like drawing and painting and sculpture and pottery, and I've, I've done all of that over the years. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyways, this has been a very long video. Um, I've got two almost half hour files to splice together and cut a few snafus out of. Um, but thank you for watching. If you've made it all the way to the end, likes, subscribes, comments are always very much appreciated. I'm thinking about trying to do this every other week again, trying to get back into the groove. This fall is just so absolutely crazy. And between the getting married and all the shows and the computer, cr you know, literally crashing to the ground and losing the videos I had recorded, it's just, um, yeah, <laughs> it's just been a lot. And so, um, you know, I'm hoping to get back into this. So maybe in a couple weeks, there'll be another episode. And if there is, I will see you then. And thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a good one. Bye.